down. These new F1 cars are really slow. That's a sentence most of us have heard since the 2022 regulations came out. So this question really just means, is the FIA stopping progress in F1? Well, the answer might surprise you, so let's not waste any more time with this intro and get right into the video. In 2022, we have witnessed one of Formula 1's biggest regulation changes in its entire history. The way cars are modelled, shaped and perform was heavily influenced, but so was lap time. This isn't exactly the first time the FIA has done something like this. In fact, even though this is often regarded as the pinnacle of motorsport, F1's new owners, Liberty Media, have no intention of letting the championship be, as it often happened in the past, dominated by a few drivers with really special and powerful cars. So, to combat this, they have in fact made F1 more mainstream, and since the acquisition in 2016, it has blown up, in part thanks to last year's championship battle. By making Formula 1 such a popular sport to watch, they have implicitly asked the FIA to do something with the regulations so that a new era of closer fighting could begin, and that's exactly what the Federation delivered. But first, let's look at the other recent examples in the past when the FIA changed the rules in order to allow for better racing. But we're not going to look at successful attempts at doing so. We are instead going to look at the dumbest rule changes made in the name of closer racing done by the FIA, just to get a better understanding on why we shouldn't really be against these new 2022 rule changes. First, a not well-known change in the race format, which was the double points finale in Abu Dhabi. This rule was introduced in 2014 and was created to allow for some closer race finales, when in reality it just ended up making the rest of the season less important. We all know how the Yas Marina circuit doesn't offer great racing by itself, and this added element meant that we are going to watch every year the same boring battles, this time for a bit more points. Obviously, the rule was removed in the next season and was never thought about as a positive change. We did, however, witness a team getting the most points in a single F1 weekend, and that wasn't Mercedes as you might be thinking, but Williams. Yes, the current backmarker was once a great team, fighting at the front at every race because Valtteri Bottas and Felipe Massa finished the race respectively in second and third. The team managed to get 66 points for that single weekend. That's a big number. Moving into the next one, we have pit stops. Yes, pit stops have their own rules too. The rule change we're talking about is not making refueling during the race illegal, as that was probably for the best, both for the safety of the pit crew and for the racing in general, as previously doing undercuts meant coming out of the pit lane with much more fuel than competitors had on track, meaning being slower due to having extra weight to carry. We're talking about how for the whole 2005 season, tyre changes were banned. Yes, you heard that right cars could come in the pits just to refuel and continue with the racing. Exactly the opposite of what cars are allowed to do today. Of course, this meant slower cars as tyre compounds became harder to last longer, and a lot of tyre blowouts during the season. Cars were, however, allowed to change tyres if they had punctures, which I guess is kind of right, but also on the other hand, not fair, as that gave an opportunity to have better performing tyres with more grip after coming out of the pits. Other situations in which drivers could pit for different compounds were after weather changes and if they had really bad flat spots, which again opened up the possibility for drivers to cheat the system simply by locking up on purpose and then pitting. Thankfully, this ended up being removed in the next season. Next up, elimination qualifying. This was introduced in the 2016 season and was supposed to give us fans a more interesting spectacle to watch, but it ended up being messy and unusable. Basically, there were the standard three qualifying sessions we use today, but in the first and second one, nine drivers were taken out of contention for pole position every 90 seconds by being eliminated, and this would go on until Q3, when just eight drivers were left fighting for the first grid slot. In all qualifying sessions, the lap was kept until the driver was out, but it made the battle for the chequered flag a lot less interesting, as most drivers didn't have time or were eliminated before they could go any faster. This was the reason this new and weird format that was supposed to give us a nicer spectacle was a complete failure, being used for just two races until the old and loved qualifying we still use to this day came back into race weekends. The idea wasn't that bad, but at the end it wasn't really adding anything to what we had during the races. It was just completely eliminating the possibility of having someone in a slower car have an amazing lap, as most of the midfield drivers were eliminated early in the sessions. But hey, if there's something good the FIA did in 2016, was prepare for 2017. It was good, right? Well, not really. 
The new technical regulations meant that cars needed completely clean air to be able to go through corners, meaning less fighting resulted this rule change. The cars were now wider by over 20 centimeters, with larger tires, front wing and back wing, and were heavier, with an over 20 kilos increase in maximum weight, going from 702 to 722 kilograms per car plus tires. With this new wider bodywork, fewer cars were able to be on the same part of the track, and the long shark fin in the back made them look kind of ugly. These new cars were much more similar to those that were used until 2021, and the ones Mercedes used to dominate most of the season of the hybrid era. But if not to get closer racing, why were these new regulations introduced? Well, they lowered lap time by 4 or 5 seconds depending on the circuit. That's it. Isn't it weird how everything the FIA does is wrong? They increase lap times to get closer racing, and fans are angry because now this is no longer the pinnacle of motorsport. They decrease lap times and the fans are angry that there isn't closer racing. The guys behind the sporting regulations have this innate ability to make everything they do seem bad. Kudos to them. Lastly, how could we miss the opportunity to talk about these new 2022 cars? This had to be included even though until now it hasn't really turned out to be anything too bad. I mean, closer racing I guess. The problem was probably in how the FIA let teams design their cars. It would have been much better if for a single year teams could have had all the same time in the wind tunnel despite of their championship finish the previous season, as these new regulation changes mean completely different cars, but no, this rule had to be followed like it was a law. So now we ended up with Ferrari at the front for most of the season, Mercedes becoming a new midfield team, and Red Bull having a rocket ship instead of a car. Is that what you wanted, FIA? Well, at least they're now able to follow more closely to each other. These new cars have larger brakes, wheel covers and over-the-wheel winglets, more rounded aerodynamic components, and generate downforce mostly from the floor using ground effects like F1 cars did in the 70s. But what do the drivers think of these new rules? Fernando Alonso said in an interview after Barcelona pre-season testing that the car is quite enjoyable to drive, it's just a bit different, so we are still in the learning phase. Well, if the drivers are happy, we should all be happy, right? Well, not really. These new cars are now slower, with the new maximum weight being increased by 43 kilos to 793 kilograms. They're less agile in corners, meaning lap times are always slower than what we had in previous years. On this note, Alonso said that we're a couple of seconds slower probably than last year. So that's never a fun thing from a driver point of view. You want to always be faster and faster and lighter cars. Honestly, from a fan point of view, it's safe to say we really didn't have enough time to correctly judge these cars meaning that it is only a matter of time before we start finding the serious issues. This season went away really fast. It seems like yesterday that Leclerc was leading the championship, and now we're already at the penultimate race of the season. Sad F1 fan noises. So, what do you think? Are these new F1 cars better for racing? Will we ever get back to 2021 style cars? Let us know with a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe, because at 10,000 subscribers, we're going to convince the FIA to change the tech regulations. No, not really, but you should subscribe anyway, 